Send those honors to the forerunner, the harbinger, uh, Marcus Mosiah Garvey, who did uh, warn and stir up the nations. I'd like to extend those honors to the Moorish Science Temple of America, subordinate temple number 19. I'd like to extend those honors to the office of the grand governor, the office of the lieutenant grand governor, the office of the uh, chairman, the entire sheik staff. Um, I'd like to extend those honors to the eels and bays, and I'd like to extend those honors uh, to our visitors and I'm never seeing the growth as long. As long. The Holy Prophet Noble Jew Ali in uh, the Quran questions for Moorish Americans, key number 42, he says, what is the covenant of the great God Allah? Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the earth land which the Lord thy God Allah <coughs> hath given thee. Islam. Islam. We're going to talk real briefly about the concept of a covenant. All right. And uh, honors to Sheikh Rashid uh, for um, allowing me and uh, selecting me to uh, bring a portion of, of, of wisdom to you. I'm going to talk about covenant here. Uh, Sheikh Rashid, he um, touched a lot upon what um, what I want to talk about. All right. So covenant. Anyone know what a covenant is or what that, what this word means? Covenant. Covenant is a divine contract. All right, so the prophet put that in our, our Moorish 101 question. So where, what did the prophet, where did he get that? So if you look at the Holy Bible, Piscean text, in the book of Exodus, the book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 12, it says, Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord, it says, thy God giveth thee. Alright? So, what's so important about this divine covenant? So for one thing, this comes from the book of Exodus. Alright? And at that time, the Israelites were, uh, we'll say, in captivity uh, by by Egypt, so Exodus talks about how the Israelites in Exodus that that just that's that's like a form of exit how they exited captivity. All right, so one of the things that they were commanded to do as a part of getting out of captivity was to honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. So this was a a covenant. All right. This is a covenant between the Israelites and Allah, all right? Now this is also, uh, being that the Israelites, like the, uh, like the brother spoke about earlier, our ancestors, Moabites, Canaanites, being of Canaanite descent, Us being the Moorish Americans, we also have that same great covenant with Allah. All right? Now, in Matthew chapter 6, verse, in verse 24, when uh, Jesus, or Yahshua, was giving that sermon on the mount, he said, no man can serve two masters. 
For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. All right? You cannot serve God or Allah and mammon. The Moorish Americans are the descendants of the ancient Moabites. All right? So who, who inhabited the northwestern and southwestern shores of Africa? The Moabites were, um, we'll say, driven from the land, from the land of Moab, by the Israelites, all right, because they broke the covenant with Allah. All right? And the Moabites, anybody remember who, who they served? Can everybody see that? Balak or Balak. So how does this tie in? The Sheikh also spoke about um, he spoke about slavery and he talked about uh, involuntary servitude. So if you look at the 13th Amendment It says neither slavery nor involuntary servitude. All right? So, he talked about us. We weren't, we're not the descendants, we're not descendants of slaves. He broke that down quite eloquently. All right? And how slave is, is, is it, it, tie, it ties back into uh, Slav or Slavic or, you know, some European nations. So it says neither slavery. nor involuntary servitude. Now, we're not descendants of slaves, but our ancestors were, um, many of them, they were in involuntary servitude, all right? So, now the, the 13th Amendment made these illegal. Slavery's illegal. Involuntary servitude, illegal. What else? The traffic, the traffic of slaves with Africa. All right. These are all illegal today. Okay. The prophet tells us, he, he gives a measure, name some of the marks put on the moors of the northwest. All right. Negro, black color, Ethiopian. So we as moors, we like to refer to these, and I mean, this is, this is true. This is in law. We like to refer to these as slave labels or slave names. Okay. We know there is a nation today, you know, termed Ethiopian. We're not, we're not, in that context, we're not, we're not talking in that context. So Negro, black color, and Ethiopian, some of the marks given to the, uh, to the Moors of, of Northwest. Now, if we continue to carry these, what's going on here? All right, so slavery is illegal, involuntary servitude is illegal, Trafficking slaves of Africa is illegal. All right. All right. So, if we carry these, what are we what are we getting into here? Voluntary. We're getting into voluntary servitude. You have a question? Okay. So, uh, what, what do we classify ourselves as? What do we classify ourselves as? So, as far as a race. The prophet gives us the measure of Asiatic, okay? Because the world 
was all at one time Asia, us being the original man and woman being Asiatics. As a nationality, we are Moorish American because we are descendants of Moroccans born in America. So to get on this, 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 this involuntary servitude, I, I, I'd like to demonstrate that and then take any other questions. This is a, uh, this is a book. This is Contracts, a modern course book, all right, by Templin. So this is a book that, this is the course book for contracts for uh, first year law students, okay? The contracts book. Don't forget we're talking about a, a covenant here. We have a covenant with the great God of law, covenant which is a divine contract. All right. So, language of the express terms of a contract. So this is the chapter on interpretation and implied terms. The language of the express terms is the single most important factor in determining intent. Okay? The language might be written, oral, or oral, provided the peril evidence rule doesn't bar it. So peril evidence is best just talking about what you say is, is being evidence. So let's get to technical meaning. Words may carry a technical meaning that is different from the ordinary meaning depending on the place, business, or profession. All right, so the prophet gives us the measure on what these words mean. What's a Negro? Negro's a four-legged animal. Islam. What is black? Black, according to science, means death. All right, and we know science deals with knowledge or to know. All right, so black, according to science, means death. I tell you what, though. I challenged the prophet on this when I first got into the movement. And I found out that a Negro, there's literature that says a Negro is a four-legged animal in law. Indeed. All right? In law, a Negro is a four-legged animal. Yes, sir. Islam, I'm mm -hmm. rising. Y'all praise to Allah. High Islam, I'm so by Prophet Jarell. Islam, Islam. Um, there's actually a book that was uh, offered in the early 1900s, entitled "The Negro Is." Let me say that's right. The Negro is a beast. Excuse me. Charles Carroll. Islam. The, the Negro a beast. In the image of God by Charles Carroll, and it, it approaches it from a legal perspective. That the moment just Islam. I mean, that's that's how that's how <laughs> that's how we work. Praise you know, Allah. he. he he, he, he got it in he my head. So it's Negro, a, a beast or a four-legged animal. It talks about us being the, it's actually the descendant of Ham or a four-legged animal. Mm. Okay? What? Yes, sir. Basically a beast. A beast. So where do you see in the, in the Piscean text or any divine book, a true divine record where it talks about a Negro? It doesn't. All right, but it does talk about the descendants of Ham. Black, according to science, means death. Um, about 18, 19 years ago, I, I was interning with NASA, right? And we were studying the effects of increased carbon dioxide on different cultivars of beans. I was talking to some scientists, asking some questions, and he said something that kind of, you know, I, I, at that point I was just getting, you know, getting into science, and there's a word that he threw out there, necrosis. Negro is a derivative of necrosis. Necrosis means dying or death. Mm -hmm. All right. Negro, some in it'll say, well, uh, Negro means black in Spanish, right? Mm -hmm. 
So now they'll 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 have us they'll they'll have us thinking that you know Negro and black is this, you know it's this play on words. So now the prophet gives us a measure according to science. Black means it means death. That's the spell that that has been put upon us. Colored. But while we're on this this uh, Spanish thing, y'all have heard of this word? Yep. Yes, sir. No word. When you talk about a dark, a darker complexion, this would be the uh, appropriate term, noir, and it means ebony. All right, in Spanish. Colored. Anything painted, varnished, or dyed. All right. Ethiopia. That refers to something divided. If you look at chapter seven, chapter 47 of our Holy Quran um, of the Moorish Science Temple of America, Circle 7, it'll, it'll give that demonstration on Ethiopian being the dividing of the land between Ham and Kush, father and son. All right? So, it, it, you know, it's, it's like a, it's a survey. It's referring to a land survey. But let's, let's carry on this contract. Words may carry a technical meaning that is different from the ordinary meaning depending on the place, business, or profession, all right? So what were, they in the, what were the Europeans in the business of back in, uh, before 1865? What were they in the business of, all right? The traffic of slaves. As restatement the second of contract section 202, comment F playfully notes, mules may mean animals, shoes, or machines. A ram may mean an animal or a hydraulic ram. Zebra may refer to a mammal, a butterfly, a lizard, a fish, a type of plant, tree, or wood, or merely to the letter Z. The technical meaning of a word is sometimes referred to as trade usage. I don't think that hurt me. <laughs> the, the technical meaning of a word is sometimes referred to as trade usage. Mm. Trade usage. What, what do we have? What's going on here now? Trade, trade usage, right? All right, trade. Trade usage. So when that trading was going on, these words, there was a trade usage associated with these words. All right? Negro, black, colored, those refer to our ancestors that were in involuntary servitude. However, trade usage encompasses not only the meanings of words in a trade, but also general customs and practice. So, what happened here? Words that, and, and in that same uh, book of the Negro, uh, a beast, or you know, the descendant of Ham, by Charles Carroll, it talks about the uh, it talks about the Europeans that put the color codes on us. Johann Blumenbach and uh, Carolus Linnaeus. All right, in that same book, that label that was giving to us, we have now adopted it into our general customs and practices. Mm. So what did we do here? What, 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 so we went from a covenant, a divine contract, to just a contract. All right? The prophet says what we have now is mental slavery. All right? We're... We're in a we're in a, a contract today to be kept into mental servitude. That's fine. All right, mental slavery.
in addition to a technical meaning, you should note that the parties could always expressly define a term in the contract as having a certain meaning that is different than the ordinary meaning. In addition to a technical meaning, you should note that the parties could always expressly define a term in the contract as having a certain meaning that is different than the ordinary meaning. All right? If the parties expressly decide that the word orange means the color black, then courts would not interfere to give the term the ordinary meaning. <laughs> If the parties expressly decide that the word orange means the color black, then courts would not interfere to give the term the ordinary meaning. So, our chairman likes to give the demonstration of, uh, you know, look at the, this chair is black. All right, the black can describe uh, how we look, but it doesn't tell us who we are. Indeed. Okay, and I will say not even all of us are, are black. We we've, we've gone from, you know, we would call you know that brother black, that brother black, and you know, the prophet says we're of olive tone. How many shades of black are there? <laughs> I mean, we went from calling stuff that is red and brown and you name it. Now everything is just all of a sudden black, the same color as that chair. And reduced to an inanimate object. Mm, talk about it. Inanimate object. That makes you dead. Boy, that makes you move. dead. <laughs> that makes you dead. So, I have a zeal. And the reason why I have a zeal for the prophets is because nobody else told us this. Praise mm -hmm. No one else broke it down, you know, into terms that a third grader could understand. Mm -hmm. And I give these lessons to my children, and I mean, it's this is just it's, it's not it's not hard at all. But the chairman talked about that Stockholm syndrome, you know, and and, and PTSD and those things. That's real. That's real, and it's been passed down from generation to generation. My grandfather on my father's side, you know, I was going back and forth, don't want to keep, you know, keep the last name Anfield, you know, going back and forth with that. My grandfather was born in 1906. He said that as far back as they can remember, we've had that name. Now, yeah, there were those, there were some that were in involuntary servitude that, you know, were in my family. You know, on my mother's side and grandmother and, and you know, and things like that. But the point I'm making is, we really, we really don't know. Like you said, some of us, you know, were here before the Europeans even got here. So why would we be to agree names and labels that were placed upon us by, uh, you know, by slaveholders? You know, Noble Ju Ali. He, um, you know, like I say, Noble Ju Ali, he's the man. You know, <laughs> I mean, when the chairman talked about sovereign. <laughs> His name is Noble Juwali. Indeed he is.